something just killed my dog. Something killed your dog? My dog went flying through the air over the tree. I don't know how it did it. Okay. The simplest explanation is that there is indeed a creature such as these people see and uh, it makes these tracks. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, if you consider only that, your reaction will, will probably be, well, that's nonsense, that, that couldn't be so. All right, but what are your alternatives? And the only one that uh, has ever been raised that has any substance at all is that uh, the tracks are the result of a human hoax. And certainly this is... In other words, if somebody is trying to pull something over on yeah, who I mean, or what. Huh? And, and you really can't write off all the sightings either. I mean, you can say some of them are mistaken and uh, some of them are made up and mm -hmm. some of them are hallucinations or what all, but it, it's... Uh, you really can't write them all off. Uh, so that... Uh, you, you've got to say that, that if you do not have such an animal, then you have not just one person, but a, a continuing group of, of people who are, are going to great trouble and expense to perpetuate this hoax. And they must be dressing up and masquerading to some extent, as well as manufacturing footprints. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not impossible when people do some mighty queer things. But there's no evidence for it. In, in, in all this time, uh, you know, we've come up with all the evidence that you could ask for that there is a creature other than the creature itself. John Green's research and writings on the subject have encompassed the better part of 20 years. For Green, the Sasquatch exists, despite the fact that he himself has never seen one. A calm, somewhat dispassionate man, his writings reflect a journalistic background. The Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism. Newspapers in Toronto, Victoria, Vancouver, B.C. Publisher of a weekly newspaper near Harrison Hot Springs, where he now resides with his wife and family, and where he has devoted a large portion of his time and resources in attempting to obtain a thorough scientific investigation into the subject and assembling what is certainly one of the largest collections of Bigfoot material available to date. The most conspicuous, of course, being the tracks themselves. Photographed, measured, tested for compression, and preserved in plaster, they represent a significant sample of thousands of tracks that have been found scattered over a half million square miles in area and a thousand miles in length. These, together with reports of sightings and eyewitness accounts of encounters with the animal in question, help to trace the outline, at least, of the phenomenon in which he has played so major a role. First, as a skeptical reporter, and eventually, as a dedicated researcher, whose refusal to accept the easy explanation of lies, bears, and hallucinations led to the conviction he holds today. Drawing from hundreds of reports, a number of which he has investigated personally, his up-to-date factual publications have helped greatly to publicize the Sasquatch problem. Yet despite the mass of reports, they represent only a small fraction of the populace, and lacking physical evidence, the scientific... And here you have a creature that is, is obviously totally in command of the situation, physically. It's too big for anything to bother it. It can eat just about anything. It's got a good fur coat and uh, quite and possibly go, can huh? even sleep in the, in the cold weather. It yeah. doesn't have to be around. And uh, 
you know, there's simply nothing there to put any pressure on this thing to develop, to survive by its will. Yeah. It'd just be like the gorilla, which is a tremendously uh, intelligent animal, but lives the life of a cow. It's yes. Just, uh, and uh, this idea that this is some kind of uh, subhuman or semi-human, or some people even think they're superior to humans, and, you know, the, the idyllic forest life kind of a thing. Uh, there's nothing going for it. Uh, there are people that claim to, to uh, know a lot about Sasquatches that claim that they're human, but uh, either they're the kind of people who just have a belief and everything has to fit it, or else they're saying this because it's the popular thing to say. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason that there's any mystery to this at all, is that nothing physical has been found. If it ever had been, we wouldn't be sitting here. There would <laughs> be another animal there that we would know about, and, and uh, that would be that. I'm convinced. Uh, I, you know, I, it's not a matter of faith, it's a matter of evidence. I've got no commitment to an animal. I'm, I'm not in that field at all. I'm a newspaper man. Uh, all I was dealing with was something interesting. Mm -hmm. but, uh, there's a phenomenon that, that uh, attracted my attention and, and uh, I started investigating. One of the most frustrating things must be to actually see one. Yeah, I'm just as glad I have it. Then, then in that case, you know. You have your own visual evidence that such a thing exists. Yeah, and then you can't stand back and, and, and take a... Uh, an impartial no, there's no way. at all. You're no stuck. Way. You, you know, know that such a thing is. They're trying to convince people that you're telling the truth and really saw what you right. see. So, and this this is very hard on a lot of people. It would be. They're, they're accustomed to having their word accepted. Sure. And all of a sudden, it just doesn't work anymore. And it's a real shock to them. They may even reach the stage where you're wondering if if you had actually seen something or not, if your mind had played tricks on you. you know, I'm you, sure that a lot of people, the mind tidies this away after a while. Yeah, it's just too hard to accept. Now, that's one of the first things I learned. I've probably learned more psychology than zoology over the years. Is that right? Is that there is a mechanism in the mind that tidies things up. Uh -huh. I would get, uh, you know, away from this for a month or so, not, nothing would bring it to my mind at all. And the next time that the subject would be uh, under consideration, I would realize that I had acquired an emotional attitude that it had all been explained. <laughs> and I would have to go back over it and, s and determine that it hadn't so been, you know explained. It been explained. Yeah. There's no way to me it's a myth. It, uh, uh, to me, you know, I swear to everything that I hold sacred, it, yes, indeed, there is a Sasquatch. Uh, you take it for what it's worth. Some people laugh, some people listen. Uh, uh, you get in a tight group for those who believe. It's just like a religion. Uh, you know, if I were to say to you, prove to me today that God is here, then you'd have a heck of a time doing it, you know. And likewise, you come to me and say, well, prove to me beyond a reasonable doubt that there's a Sasquatch. I can't. There's a little bit of faith involved in their belief. Uh, you either believe it or you don't. The ones that have been in it for years, like John Green, 20, 25 years he's been in it, he's never seen one. But he's got physical evidence like you wouldn't believe, you know, that these things exist. Something keeps that man going. You know, I'm sure he's, he's not, you've met the individual and you know that he's a sincere individual. Uh, why would these types of people be out in the brush, away from their family, you know, enduring hardships, or ridicule, what have you? If there isn't something out here, you know, to me, there be, beyond a reasonable doubt, there is a Sasquatch. I call it Sasquatch uh, for lack of a better name. Someday it'll be named. Having eliminated the impossible, Sherlock Holmes once said, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Yet for John Green and a growing number who continued to raise the question, credibility is still an elusive target. And the answer is yet to be found.